You know what I love about these old movies? The bad dubbing. You mean like this? How did you do that? It's a gift. You can stop that any time now. I'm trying, but I don't know how. No! Hey guys, welcome to Super Important Views. My name is Steve, and in this video I'll be going over the X Plus Garage Toys PX Preview Exclusive Angerous 1955. He is from the film Godzilla Raids Again, or what some of you might know as Gigantus the Fire Monster. And in my other video, I already gone over at length on how much I really love those films in my review of the 1955 Godzilla X Plus figure. So if you guys haven't seen it, just right there. But I'm really excited to be picking up this guy because to me, especially since we're already planning on getting the Godzilla 1955, anyways, like. This guy was just a must-have, and he's also designed to work really well with the other figure, with their poses supposed to be lining up very well with each other, which we'll check out in a little bit. And also in my collection, I don't actually have a 1955 Angerus. The only couple that I have is from the Destroy All Monsters movie, and also Angerus from Final Wars. So I'm really excited to be adding this guy to my collection to see if he's actually really worth it. So without further ado, for the packaging, pretty much the same that we got with the X Plus Godzilla 55, where you have the black and white figure on the front, and then the nice green effect going over the packaging, and then that's pretty much it for the box, because the rest of this is all just cardboard coming all the way around it. And for the back, you just get some warnings and some other mumbo jumbo, and nothing else on the bottom. So it's gonna open up Bob's cardboard prison. So now that we have Angerus opened off his prison, he looks amazing. And one thing I want to point out is this is actually a statue and not an actual action figure. Just like the Godzilla 1955, all the X-Pluses are made out of this vinyl, which it's very sturdy, but it's pretty much the same stuff that the Bandai Creation figures are made out of. So if it does get heated up, it will be a little bit pliable. This kind of leads me into what I want to talk about, is that when you get them out of the packaging, you're going to have to attach the tail, which is a pain in the butt on this guy. And it attaches right under here. And what you're going to have to do is heat the plastic up with a hairdryer at the tip to get it to be a little bit pliable so that you can insert it properly. Or you can also use hot water, but the air dryer is a little bit easier to work with. And you're going to have to pay attention because when you're attaching it, the tail can rub into the spikes here. So if you try to force the tail in, you might damage the spikes. So I just wanted you guys to know that you just want to be very careful when attaching this because really want to want to see this thing get damaged. So now we got that out of the way. What I really love about these X Plus figures is that they are pretty much straight ripped from the film in terms of design, where it's more molded after the suit than what the character is actually supposed to look like. So the suit had imperfections in the film, it's going to convey on the figure here as well, which is really awesome, where most of the normal action figures you see for these guys are slightly stylized just to be how they were meant to look. But these guys are straight up as realistic as it's going to get. And just to point out a few of the little imperfections on this guy, is that for starters on his neck here, you'll notice that there's a slit coming across here. And to me, it looks like it's been sewn together. So I'm not officially sure if this is part of the damage the suit may have gotten during filming, or if this is part of how the actor gets in and out. Because so I know officially, which is another part you'll see here, is on the shelf, there's this giant seam line coming across the entire back of it. Which this is officially, it would separate apart and then the actor would get in and out of the suit. And you can see watching the film that during some of the Godzilla fight scenes is that this will break apart. <laughs> you can kind of start seeing inside of them, which is kind of funny. So it's really cool that they incorporate a lot of these characteristics in the statue. So since the actor gets in and out of here, I really don't imagine that's probably for that. So I'm going to go with that's damage. I tried Googling it up, but I really failed to find any other evidence. And then also under here, under his neck, you'll notice there's a couple of these little holes here, which is... From what I can gather is the air holes so that the actor can breathe inside the suit. So it's really cool that they decided to add that to the actual figure. And then for the most part, that's the most noticeable things on him because everything else on here is pretty much just either wrinkling in the suit evolved from his overall pose or just pretty much how I would imagine this guy to really look. And then moving my camera slightly a bit just so I can show you guys a lot of his closer details. For his head sculpt, turned out really awesome. Really love how his eyes are just kind of looking up and very derpy orient, which is pretty accurate to what he looks like in the film, because in the film he looked kind of always just a little bit stoned out of his mind in a lot of the scenes. And it's kind of cool that they conveyed that onto the figure. But I really love how all these details turned out, where each of these teeth are individually sculpted, so it really gives this figure a very menacing look. So you can see back here for his horns coming across the back of his head, they look really nice as well. Really love the detailing here, where it's this very nice bone white color. The little bit of grays mixed in there coming into the overall black and white design of this guy's body. Where he's very charcoal looking. 
So that's really cool and really makes him very reminiscent of what he looked like in the film. And you can see even on the inside of his mouth he has a lot of detailing coming down here too where the roof of his mouth goes all the way down to the back of his throat. And the same here for his tongue has a lot of very nice details on it as well. And one thing I always thought was funny, especially having to rewatch the film just to see it, where you see a lot of the fight scenes where Angerus is kind of like flopping up and down, you see his mouth kind of like come down to near his neck, so maybe cool to maybe see a little bit of articulation so you can have it flop down, but it's still, it, in terms of just keeping it a statue, this still is a very nice pose, but just want to point out one of those goofy little things I've seen from the film. And the one thing I thought was pretty weird is overall that he has a lot of these little white specks up here on the upper part of his body. And you only see him really up on his shoulder regions, a little bit on his hand, and some spots of his neck. When you watch the film, you'll actually notice these spots too, where it kind of like sparkles in the film. And so it's really cool that they convey that onto the figure. And you don't see it really anywhere else on the f actual statue. While in the film, it's the exact same thing. So it's really cool that they got that to be pretty accurate to the film. And then his hands look so much nicer than Godzilla 1955s. <laughs> Especially on the inside, it's like, oh, just <laughs> doesn't look like he's been sitting in the water for like years on end. And then the details on his stomach look really nice as well. And I really like how the scales turned on his body, it was very different from what we got Godzilla, where he was about to look like how like skin would look after it was exposed to radiation. While his is actually straight up just pretty much dinosaur or dragon scales under here. So that's really sweet. And see a lot more of the folds here on his leg. Also his kaiju feet, very nicely painted. You can see a lot more of the bone white here on the tip of his toes. And then no details underneath his feet, sadly. Really love how shell turned out, with all these spikes being individually sculpted and very nice and have really good symmetry with each other. It's also really cool that coming around the sides here is that you'll notice that each of these start kind of getting a little bit uneven or just a little awkward shapes going on throughout it. And then back here at the end of the shell, you see here that it's pretty much just these spikes are just one disheveled mess and just really random size and angles that they got going on here. So that's really cool and you can see even more of just how uneven the spikes get along here. And I just really love the look of that overall and it's very accurate to the film so that's awesome. And then just show some of the seam marks on here too on his legs. There's some right here but it's very well hidden underneath the folds of the legs. Same over here on this leg as well. And then he's also got him here on the arms, but also again, just very nicely concealed because of all the folding of the skin here. Same with over here. The only real noticeable one here is on the neck up here. It's very noticeable coming across here and then it kind of hides a little bit better with the flap right on here underneath the neck. And then coming down to his tail here, which again, starts right here is where you connect it. And that's the only real major cap here. And then you just get the rest of the tail section under here. Which turned out really, really good. Really like how the spikes turned on his tail. And then one thing other to mention here is his tail actually can move a little bit. Which I'm not sure if that's actually supposed to be going all the way around so you could pose it. Because it kind of seems like it's loosening up a bit. But it can shift slightly side to side realistically. So you can get a little bit of waggage if you want. And then there's the segment here, right here, and then one more towards the tip of the tail, but this one doesn't really move much at all. And the one thing that is a little bit of a disappointment for me anyways, is that on the tail, it's very clean, which I would imagine because for a lot of the tail sections, you're gonna be seeing a lot of wire effects where they would be using wires underneath the tail to lift it up to get it to move up and down in whichever direction they need it to go. But you don't really see any of the marks here on that tail. So I imagine it's just to uh, make it a little bit easier and a lot more stylized. But it would just been kind of nice to maybe see some kind of effect for it. But other than that, overall, I think he turned out really awesome. Really love the overall design. The color on him is a great choice with the black and white. So let's get Godzilla in here and see how they look together. So now we got Godzilla in the picture. They look beautiful together. Really love the pose that they got going where they have this nice stare down look to each other. And you don't really have to have them this close to each other. It's just the way I prefer it. So if you guys are planning on getting either Godzilla 1955 or the Angerus, I really do recommend getting both of them together because they make for a very nice set piece. And they just look like they're about ready to take down Osaka together and just really makes me wish I had the castle to go in between because that would be 
awesome. And for some other comparison, here's the X Plus Angerus compared next to some other Angeruses in my collection with the 68 Angerus and the Final Wars Angerus. And here's the NECA's 18 inch Gypsy Danger and Trendmaster's 18 inch Godzilla 98. And here is wearing a Godzilla mask. Overall, Angerus 1955, I think this guy is unbelievably good. The paint job, the details, the sculpt, everything about him is pretty much exactly how I would have wanted it to be. And he looks really awesome with the Godzilla 1955. So if you guys are planning on getting him, I really do recommend picking this guy up. And if you guys just like Angerus, I was just going to pick this guy up. Or if you guys just like Kaiju, you see where I'm going with this? And if you guys can afford the little bit hefty price tag of, uh, as of the end of December 2014, he's going for $160, then this guy is the Kaiju for you. So what do you guys think? You guys like Godzilla's first foe? Who's your guys' favorite Godzilla enemy, or should he just stay burning in Osaka? Please let us know in the comments. A little closer picture on Facebook. If you want to click the link description below. Please don't be afraid to share this video around. And if you like this and want to see more stuff like this, please give us a like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.